I mean, yeah. This thing, so I would. More and more people riding them, but not like that. Yeah, I've been getting people to buy them. I've been getting people to buy them. So far, two people have bought them in town because of like my videos and stuff. So, and then uh, I was gonna say I went out to Blackstone with it. And I was racing Chargers and Challengers. I was beating them off the line all the way up to 50. <laughs> and I was pedaling at the same time, too. But yeah, it's hilarious. Hell yeah. Right. You work? Yeah. All right. All right, man. I'll, sm I'll smash out of you. <laughs> I hate seeing posts online all day long if I'm in a group, like the Aerial Rider group or I'm in the Super 73 group. I hate how people can't accept the fact that certain bikes have different, you know, qualities to them. So, we all know the Super 73 is slow as hell. It has no torque. It looks fantastic. Those bikes look super nice. And then you get the Aerial Rider. The Aerial Rider is ugly as hell, but it outperforms the Super 73 in every single way. Battery range, power, price. But I hate when people can't accept the fact when I try to tell them I own both bikes. And I'm like, hey, look. I'm like, hey, look, check this out. So the Super 73 is more comfortable to sit on, especially if you're a shorter person. The Aerial Rider is a very tall bike. It's not good for short people. And then if you are on the taller side on the Aerial Rider, it's really hard to, uh, sit on it the pedals come really high up and you guys gotta stop bandwagoning these companies because everyone just says oh well, all you have to do is get shorter cranks okay yeah we can all modify our bikes and we can all do that but you guys have to stop like you gotta accept the fact that some bikes do things better than others completely stop we can all modify our bikes and honestly like 80 percent of the people that do get these bikes that keep them for a while they do modify them but i'm trying to get you the point across that the Super 73 for me, I'm 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 and it is comfortable as hell. Right out of the box. The hand up hard, it feels comfortable. I keep telling people in the Aerial Rider group, I'm like, look, the Aerial Rider, when you sit on it, is uncomfortable. The, the seat isn't long enough, and if you're tall, your feet kind of go up really high. It's not that comfortable to sit on. The cranks rotate really, really far, farther than they technically should. And um, the Super 73 doesn't do that. But then everyone says you can just modify, get a longer seat, or that the Super 73 costs more. Why would you buy that? And it's slower power. Like, they're all good points. But people just don't, like, want to listen to uh, the negatives on each bike. And a lot of these people that are making the comments... If I'm in the Super 73 group, all they own is a Super 73. And if I'm in the Aerial Rider group, all they own is an Aerial Rider, so. I ride these bikes on the daily, and I keep telling people, if you ride the Aerial Rider off-road, it's great, it has the power. But you let one hand off of that bike, and you hit a hole, the steering moves really, really bad like where you almost could crash even my girlfriend rode it didn't tell her anything about it and she was like holy crap like i almost uh flew off the bike it was super slippery and that's true it has nothing to do with the tires it's just how far the handlebars are from the front of the the bike the lower the handlebars the more you have comfort over uh the control of the bike and stuff super 73 does that very very well their handlebars are not ape hangers they're not like way up there But come on guys, you gotta hear people out when someone's rode everything and they can switch between each one, you know? Like you gotta hear people out on, every bike has its own like pros and cons. And I really feel like I need to make a video like actually with the bikes in front of me and riding them between the Super 73 and the Aerial Rider Grizzly because the Aerial Rider has fantastic pros but so does the Super 73, and they both have huge negatives. But it's like, come on, people, just be open. Just understand that your bike is not the best. Even though on paper, why would you get a Super 73 when the Aerial Rider beats it all? But, like, they don't talk about any of the negative stuff. 
I want you guys to keep in mind that I don't get paid by any of these companies that say anything. I buy all my bikes outright. I've never had a company send me a bike. I've only got one free skateboard. I have never received any free bikes. So I'm buying these on myself. And I'm here to tell you that the Super 73 is way more comfortable, like completely factory. And uh, it handles a lot better than the Aerial Rider. And it looks way better. Idiot. And then what the aerial rider is good at is having the torque to get up hills. The all-wheel drive, you can climb and go through anything. Sand, mud, dirt, gravel. It's not gonna have a problem whatsoever. And if distance is really like an issue, the aerial rider is what you wanna get because it has two batteries. But regardless, I love both bikes, but my personal opinion is that the Super 73 is the more comfortable bike to keep. I already have fast bikes. If I didn't have fast bikes, like if I didn't have the Onyx and I didn't have the Suron, of course, the Aerial Rider would be, you know, probably my better pick, even though it's ugly and uncomfortable to ride everywhere. And pedaling on it just feels weird as hell. I would keep it over the Super 73 if I didn't have faster bikes. But since I have faster bikes, I keep the 73 all day long because it's more comfortable for people to ride. It's a lot safer on handling and it looks badass. And there's a bunch of companies that make hella mods for them already. Like hella mods. You can find so many mods for the Super 73 than you can the Aerial. There's some mods, but there's not a lot. I, I feel like once Super 73 gets their shit together with the torque and all that stuff on the bike, I feel like there's not going to be an issue. Once they get their motors figured out, they put like a 3000 watt motor and they get, you know, the torque up there. They put metal gears, they're golden. Yeah, there's just so much stuff we could talk about because Super 73 bike is quiet well it's quieter than the aerial rider the aerial rider is hella loud so if noise is a concern you might want to get the super 73 but the reason why the aerial rider is so loud because they use metal gears in the motors which are way superior than nylon gears which is what super 73 uses and the gears in the super 73 a lot of them have uh, have gone out but now that they have fixed it i think they're on version uh number three and they fix it and there hasn't been a problem that I've heard of. But the aerial rider is loud. Loud, loud. Vinny! Hey. I was going to say what's up. Hey, I'm oh, going through the back. Vinny was busy. Just wanted to say what's up. Whoa, it's cold in here. All right, guys, that's going to do the video. So just keep a, just have an open mind about when you're, you know, when people are talking about, you know, different bikes and, you know, what's good on this and what's bad on that. Because if you haven't rode both of them, you shouldn't bag bandwagon one company over the other. Take it from someone that's rode a lot of them. All right, guys, we'll see you.